All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody, uh, wherever on the globe you might be. Uh, this is the GeoSolutions webinar on the new release of GeoNode 4.1. I'm I'm Ryan Burley in business development with GeoSolutions USA, and uh, Giovanni will be uh, providing the technical the technical uh, update and details on GeoNode 4.1. Um, just to get started, if you're not familiar with GeoSolutions, we'll give you a quick background. And I do want to uh, emphasize anytime you have any questions on open source geo software, data, challenges, hybridization with proprietary applications, any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me or info at geosolutionsgroup.com. Um, obviously, we'll have Q&A towards the end of this webinar as well, but uh, feel free to reach out to us anytime with any questions. Um, and we're, we're always happy to support and hear how you're using a open source uh, software in your applications and operations. Um, a bit of background on GeoSolutions. Uh, we're founded in 2006. We have offices in Italy and US. Uh, so we've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, GeoSolutions is comprised of the core code developers and core co code committers for uh, GeoServer, GeoNode and MapStore. Uh, as well as a lot of the associated plugins, geo tools, uh, input output extensions, et cetera. Um, we're also highly involved with uh, open source interoperability protocols, such as WMS, WCS, WMTS, uh, all of the things that make things uh, open and interoperable um, on the geospatial software side. Uh, our core products that we focus on are GeoServer, MapStore, and GeoNode, which we're focusing on today. Uh, GeoServer is the open source server written in Java that allows users to share, process, and edit geospatial data. It's designed for interoperability and publishes data from any major spatial data source using open standards. Uh, MapStore is an open source, highly modular web GIS framework developed by GeoSolutions. It is used to create, manage, and share maps, dashboards, and stories created by mixing geospatial contents. Serve from sources like OpenStreetMap, being or from servers adhering to OGC standards like WFS. Uh, WMS, WMTS, et cetera. And what we're focusing on today is GeoNode. Uh, GeoNode is a geospatial content management system, which is a platform uh, for the management and publication of geospatial data. It brings together mature, stable, and open source software projects under a consistent and easy to use interface, allowing for non specialized users to share data and create interactive maps. And it's important to note that GeoNode contains GeoServer and MapStore. Um, MapStore on the on the front end, it's modified a little bit within GeoNode, so it's not the exact same as uh, um, the standalone MapStore, but all of these are wrapped together in GeoNode, um, and it's a good place to start if you are spinning up a, an SDI or, or kind of starting from, from scratch in your operations. Uh, we have clients all over the globe. Um, as you can see here, obviously we don't have insight into every geo server installation, but there are uh, what a couple hundred thousand uh, geo server installations globally with uh, uh, even more services provided through geo server. Uh, so it's the most commonly used uh, geospatial data server on the planet. And uh, we're behind a lot of the code and most of these customers we've supported either on uh, just the technical support side or doing custom development, um, everything from ingest uh, coming off of earth observation or other sensors uh, to data engineering and getting that data to quickly to uh, applications for visualization and analysis. Um, you'll see here a, a wide smattering of types of clients from large entities, large government to uh, smaller, uh, more specialized, um, companies and contractors. Some of the industries that we focus on, um, obviously anything involving earth observation and getting data, uh, massive amounts of data quickly from sensor to uh, web application um, with minimal latency. So obviously an emergency management where we focus on wildfire tracking uh, with some of our customers getting data quickly from the aircraft um, to create models and vector files of hotspots um, to uh, med oceano, oceano uh, oceanographic data and weather data um, to any variety of uh, of applications across the board. Um, precision agriculture, smart cities, 
uh, where we thrive is where there's massive amounts of data coming off of sensors and being able to get that data again quickly to uh, quickly quickly to end, end user applications for visualization and analysis. Um, we are obviously members of OSGEO, uh, highly involved in GeoServer, uh, as I mentioned before, the GeoServer project, GeoNode, MapStore, other open source tools and projects. Uh, we are members of OGC. Uh, we participate in test beds, uh, the disaster pilots, uh, any any number of projects bringing uh, a bunch of companies and organizations together to help solve the world's problems. We are USGIF members um, and uh, highly involved in GeoInt, supporting the uh, geospatial intelligence community where we can. And um, with that, uh, I will pass it off to Giovanni here in a second, but I do want to emphasize that there are several resources available to you beyond this webinar today. Uh, there's the GeoSolutions blog on our website where we consistently post uh, updates, not only related to our products, but uh, relevant industry information, such as events, uh, meetings, webinars, such as this, et cetera. Uh, so I encourage you to stay tuned to our blog. Uh, the GeoSolutions YouTube channel contains recordings from past webinars. Uh, the recording from this webinar will be posted to the YouTube channel as well, but you can find everything from past releases to tips and tricks, how to uh, you know, how to uh, webinars or videos, um, you know, it's a, it's a great, great channel to go in and see past recordings. Uh, GitHub, obviously, uh, you can find our contributions there. And again, anytime you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us, info at geosolutionsgroup.com, uh, LinkedIn and social, uh, hashtag geosolutionsgroup. Geo and um Again, we consistently uh, post information on LinkedIn and other social media outlets, uh, so you can stay tuned with us that way. Uh, we're here to help you learn and cover the knowledge gap um, between the open source technology that's out there and you being able to implement it, use it, uh, you know, hybridize and and, and get it to uh, interoperate with your proprietary software, etc. So if you ever have any questions, just reach out to us. And with that, Giovanni, I will uh, pass it off to you. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, so can you hear me, uh, Ryan? Because I had a problem with my... Uh, yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Okay, nice to meet you. And uh, okay, I just... Um, I'm not showing myself. <laughs> Here I am. And because uh, I, I will share my screen, of course, in a minute. So the idea of this webinar, uh, since many of you or some of you, I don't know, uh, already know Geonode, someone doesn't know Geonode, someone is interested in, in the news of the new version. So I will try to mix uh, all this information in this uh, time. and But I would do it, um, with a hands-on presentation, okay? So I will show you uh, GeoNode, I will navigate its functionality and its interface. And along the way, I will um, I will highlight the news of the new version. And at the end, I will probably give you some hints about the future plans and what uh, is going to happen in the next version. So, but first of all, let me introduce a bit uh, Geonode uh, with a few slides for those who don't know Geonode. So I will start sharing my camera and share the screen. Um, okay. Hope you can see my screen. Um, okay. So what's Geonode? Well, uh, as Ryan was saying, Geonode is a platform for management and publication of geospatial data. So it's sort of a, a piece of a, um, a component of a spatial data infrastructure. Um, in the end, uh, depending on the complexity of your data or your infrastructure of your systems, uh, GeoNode can be a um, all around solution. So it can do any, everything from scratch. So you can Build up, build a spatial data infrastructure with the services provided by GeoNode. So in a standalone way on an on-premise, so on your servers, on your machines, 
so it's a web platform, so it's not a desktop software, <laughs> to be clear, because some, sometimes I have this question. So it's a web platform um, that runs on your server and where you, um, well, the general hosts the data, serves the data and gives and provides the interface to manage this data. And of course, it can integrate with uh, other systems, so other, I don't know, uh, authentication systems or your existing databases and so on. But um, GeoNode itself uh, provides the following capabilities. The ability to create maps, dashboards, and geostories, manage users' accounts and with their permissions. So uh, all, the sh all the permissions to access, view, edit, or manage this data. And uh, the ability to upload uh, data, of course, I mean, to build these maps. So you can upload both spatial data sets, but also documents and media to build uh, presentations on top of these data sets. And it provides standard interfaces uh, to the so-called standard services for uh, GIS technologies, like the OGC services. So third-party applications, third-party softwares, desktop or web, soft, web softwares can interact with uh, GeoNode to uh, obtain um, the data, the, the, the Im images from this data uh, or the data itself, if they have the permissions to do that, or even edit this data. And so uh, all the all the capabilities of the standard uh, open GIS OGC uh, service are available. And then we have all the metadata system. Uh, so all the data and the maps and the dashboards, whatever you build in Geonode can have a standard metadata touched ISO standard metadata or even custom metadata um, with all the um, informations related to, to the data sets that can also be um, pulled or queried, searched through standard uh, OGC CSW services. And, and in the end, uh, we also have a RESTful API. So GeoNode can also be used as um, a backend service, let's say, for other applications uh, to interact with its uh, internal features like uploading data, managing the data, changing permissions, uh, changing the metadata, and so on, through an API, uh, standard REST uh, HTTP API that Geonode uh, implements. So basically, you take local files from your system or remote services or remote files, like URLs or from remote storage, and you, in several ways, you can pull or push the data inside the catalog of datasets and documents, which include PDF, video files, uh, audio files, XML, uh, TXT, whatever. And from these data sets, you can build, if you want, maps. So a map is a combination, is a stack uh, of data sets, special data sets on top of, the, of a base map. You can build geostories, which are uh, a way to tell a story with these uh, resources. So you can build uh, a vertical <laughs> a scrolling uh, presentation, uh, which includes uh, videos, images, maps, uh, carousels, and so on. The dashboards, so with a list of uh, widgets and charts that are available. And also, you can implement your own so-called geo apps. So uh, since I will tell you later, but GeoNode is an open source application and it's also designed to be extended. So on top of what it provides off the shelf, um, it's quite easy to extend both the backend functionality and the front-end functionality. Uh, it's based on Django. It's a Python framework that I mean a lot of users know. So, um, and the front end is a JavaScript and React framework. We built with the React framework. 
so um, it's not that impossible or it's not that hard to, to customize Geonode, even the look and feel of Geonode. Uh, so in the end, when you have your resources and your, your catalog of resources, you can um, search, query, obtain, or use these resources either through the client, to the Geonode interface, or from external services through the OGC standards, through the REST API, or by embedding uh, your resources inside external pages. So you can take a dashboard and put it in your own website, let's say. So uh, I won't dig into the details about the, the architecture, but I mean, it's completely done, uh, completely made of uh, standard, well-known open source technologies. So um, GeoServer, PostgreSQL, PostGS, uh, PyCSW, React, MapStore, Django, all these components uh, are open source components. So no licensing, no problems with uh, licensing and so on. Uh, now we are at, well, it, this presentation is from the Phosphor G presentation. Uh, so it's to be, it must be updated. In June, we released 4.1.0. Uh, now we are at 4.1.2. Uh, but I mean, starting from version 4.0.0, um, the release releases uh, follow um, a strict uh, versioning. What it means is that uh, new features are introduced uh, when the minor, which is in this case is the one, increases. So for example, 4.2.0 will have new relevant functionalities changes or news, while the zero here, which is two now, uh, these are so-called patch releases. Patch releases are meant to fix bugs or um, fix regressions, security issues, uh, or minor improvements that don't change uh, the relevant functionalities. Okay, so um, you you are safe with um, making an upgrade with a patch upgrade. Also, if you do a, a minor upgrade, you should be safe. But let's say in a minor upgrade, you might expect to have something new or something a bit different. Um, you have, you probably, you already know that there are development, uh, sorry, uh, the online demos that are free to use. You can create your own accounts. Uh, you can use it, uh, upload data and test all the functionality. We have a stable version, which is, uh, actually at this moment is 4.1.2 and the development version, which follows the master branch where all the new developments happen. So if you want to have a preview of something that is going to happen in the next release, you can try the development demo. Okay. So, um, I would go straight to, uh, Geonode, uh, I, I was. Okay, yeah, I was starting a local Geonode. So let's see if it works. Um, yeah, here it is. So I'm running a Geonode on my computer now because um, I'm running it in, it in, in a local server. So this is what you get the first time that you install and start Geonode. No customization, uh, so no branding. Uh, so these are the, the colors and the logos and the texts that come from a vanilla, uh, so-called vanilla Geonode, okay? Uh, all these things can be changed. The logo, the text, the background image, uh, the colors and the footer, but actually you can change almost anything in this interface if you want to. And there are specific ways to do that, but it's not the focus of this webinar. Um, so what you get here is the catalog view. Uh, by default, if you don't create a custom homepage, as many do, uh, by default, you are, you are, um, you jump in directly into the view of uh, 
the list of resources that are available. And in this moment, it's empty because I've just started a brand new instance uh, without any data. Uh, if you go, for example, to the development demo, you will see that uh, you have a lot of resources, also a lot of broken resources, maybe because people continuously uh, try to uh, upload data and um, and test data, and test uh, resources. Uh, you can see also something new uh, I will show you later. Um, so when you get to, to Geonode, uh, well, you will have an administrator and, and account. Uh, let's say you are the administrator, okay? Now we are in, from the, we are in the, um, uh, we are taking the role of the administrator. Okay, so I am already logged in, let's log out. Okay, so this is what you get. You have either possibility to register a new account or sign in. Registering is enabled by default, but it can be disabled. There, there are many instances, many, many situations where you don't want to let users to uh, create a new account by themselves. You can invite or you can create new users, but not let users create their own account. Okay, But by default, it's open. Now I already have an administrator account, so um, I'm going to log to log in and start creating something because I mean an empty geonode is really sad. So I sign in uh, with my password, um, and here I am. Now I have something new here that wasn't available before, which is the add resource. So from this menu, uh, you have all the options to create contents on Geonode. You can create, upload a data set, raster, vector, upload documents, create a data set from scratch. And these are the building blocks, okay? Data set and documents are the main building blocks. When you have something, you can create maps using data sets. You can create just stories using data sets and or documents, dashboards, the same, or you can even configure and pull uh, data from remote services. Uh, we will see it later. So I will start uh, creating a data set. I will use a data set um, from my local computer. As you can see, uh, the, at the moment, every shape file, which is the uh, well known format, CSV, geo package, geojson, KML, geotiff are the main formats. They can also be provided in zip format. For example, every shape files, which is a multi file format, can be provided as a zip file. And the others are just the specific. Uh, I want I won't give more details for the moment. So you can either select a file or drag and drop a file on, on this box. So I will take um, a file, let's see, whatever, um, populated places, okay? This is a shape file. So I will select the four files that make up a shape file and here you see, it's been recognized as a, well, it's a bit too big maybe for my local server. Let's take something smaller. Um, well, I will I will use something from Italy. Uh, we are from Italy, sorry. <laughs> it's, but it's more, okay? So this is a shape file in a zip, as you can see. Once you click upload, the upload transfer the data to the server and the upload starts. It's an asynchronous process. So I can even refresh the page. I will not lose my upload. It means that you don't have to stare, uh, stay here and watch it. You can, if it's a big upload, you can even go away, close your session and get back later and you will find uh, your upload here completed. Okay, so it's completed. The spinner has stopped and there's a new view, view button available. 
and let's see if I did it right. Yeah, okay. So this is the page uh, of my resource. We will get here later. Uh, if I go to the home, go back to the home page. Actually, this is the home page. Now we have one resource. You can see that now that the backend already created the thumbnail for our resource. And and one thing that I want to say about uh, the upload is that this is something very new in uh, version four and version four one zero because now we have completely refactored the upload system. It's much more robust now, uh, more um, perform performant. And um, I won't give you too many details, but we have completely reverted the way the upload works now. Uh, in previous versions, the upload was delegated to GeoServer, which is the cartographic, the GIS server behind Geonode. Uh, so Geonode was only uh, a, something in between the uh, the client and GeoServer. Now the heavy lifting is done by Geonode, so it performs the import uh, using uh, the GDAL libraries. Maybe some some one of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, G, the GDAL libraries is a is a standard, uh, open, the most used, widely used uh, open source GIS software. Uh, and many, many, many softwares, even commercial proprietary software use GDAL. And it's a really huge and great library because it it uh, can process, can use, um, I think, I would say any format uh, for spatial data that we know on earth. This means that even if you're not at the moment uh, uh, only uh, uh, accept these formats, it can be easily extended even to other formats. So if you need to upload a specific format, now it can be done with a very small effort. And moreover, we have full control over the import procedure. So in the future, probably there will come a REST API to interact with the data. Mm, it's not available at the moment, but probably in the, in the future. Uh, so if you have questions, okay, um, just ask. Oh, I already see some questions, but I, I would stop in uh, um, a few minutes, so, and I will answer, okay? I will make a pause uh, in a few minutes. Um, so now we have our first resource. Um, this was an example for the data set but something very similar can be done for documents. So if I upload the document, you will see a long list of formats. Uh, recently, we made experiments with GLTF and IFC, which are 3D formats, uh, because we are planning to work on integrating uh, 3D, uh, 3D maps, 3D visualizations in, uh, in Geonode. I mean, from the... The client is almost ready. Uh, well, it's ready. Uh, it's not uh, turned on. <laughs> the functionality is not uh, switched on because we need to make some other improvements to the backend, but we are almost there to have 3D in Geonode. So um, I, won't, I will show you, for example, a document, a simple document, let's say a picture, um, okay. You can, oh, I didn't show you, but you can select multiple files and they will be uploaded um, together. So now we have this picture, let's see. Yeah, okay. And let's also add uh, a PDF. I don't know if I have a PDF now here. Let's see in my documents, uh, I don't. I don't want to, Mm. Well, yeah, the state of Geonode, the PDF that I was showing before. Okay, now we also have PDF. So let's go back to the homepage. 
Now here we are. Preview of the document of the image and also a preview of the PDF. This home page has uh, several features. For example, the ability to show them as a list instead of a grid or the link. And it's an infinite scroll list. So you the paging is, I mean, you, if you have more, many, many resources, as you can see here, they will load continuously. So you can scroll through all the resources. And it has an important feature, which is the filter. So when you open the filter panel, you have several filters. Uh, okay, okay. The, the search filter works at, like the search filter here at the top. Uh, well, a bit different, but I will tell you why, why it's different. Uh, search filter will search on the title and the abstract, which is not provided here. Um, you can filter by the resources created by yourself, which means the owner of the resource is you, and the owner is visible here in the card. If you have favorites, because you can make, uh, you can pin some resources as your favorite resources. Let's say I want to say this is my favorite, one of my favorites. Okay, here the star is turn on and now I can filter my favorites and here it is featured um, featured are resources that have been set by an administrator to be to stay on top of the home page and stay fixed pinned on top of for example here if you go to the top you would see this resources has been uh, set as featured so they will stay here always Unpublished and pending approval, I won't tell you. It's a for a more advanced workflow uh, setup. Then you can filter by type of data set, vector, raster, remote, or time series. I will tell you something about time series in a minute. Documents, okay, or only data sets. And then you have filters for all the metadata information that can be attached to a resource. Uh, you, I will show you the metadata in a moment. Uh, you have categories, keywords, the regions, the owner, um, the date when they were created, filter, or an extent because you can attach well, data sets already have an extent, okay? But also to other other resources can be given an extent to, to, to give a special, a geolocation to documents. Um, so let's go and see what is a resource. I mean, something, all the resources share some uh, metadata. Then there are specific functionality for depending on the data type, but most of the information is shared between any type of resource. So if I click on a preview on a card, I will see in the side panel, a live preview of the resource and a, a reduced list of metadata information. So some informations, the full metadata is can be seen here by clicking this and uh, if i if i move around this panel will update so this is the preview of my image this is the preview of the pdf so i don't have to open the detail pay the details for each resource i can have a preview a quick preview just by clicking on the cards and um what you have here is well the information, okay, that I told you. Uh, the ability to download the data. So if I click download, it will, the download of this data will start, they will prepare a zip file with the data set. And same for the other uh, resources. The ability to share the link to the resource and for data sets, also, you can copy 
what you get here is the OGC web service URL to this resource. So you can use this uh, URL to add the data set to QGIS or ArcGIS, for example, and view this resource there. Um, quick info, uh, for QGIS, we have a GeoNode plugin, uh, which simplifies the browsing, searching, and visualization of data sets inside GeoNode, inside QGIS. So you can connect to a, a GeoNode server, you give it the URL, URL of the of the server of the GeoNode of GeoNode, and from QGIS you can query, search, and uh, open the data set directly <clears throat> inside QGIS. And if you have permissions, you can also edit styling, the styles, or the data itself, or the vector data. Uh, here I have the view buttons, which open the full page okay so this is the viewer and editor viewer and editor because depending on your permissions you have we will have more or less uh, functionality here okay so now i have the full list of functionality because i'm an administrator and i am the owner of the resource if you are uh, an anonymous user or another user uh, you will not be. You will see a reduced list of tools, of course. So the info panel is the same as before. Uh, then you have several options. I won't go through all of them because it would take uh, more than two hours. But so you can view the metadata. So the full metadata here. And with the links to the to the um, where well, the links are not here, the links to to the metadata file available for download. So if I click these or click these, I will get the XML files. So the metadata rendered according to the standards, so it can be shared with others. Uh, as a standard format for the metadata. You can, if you have the, 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 the permissions, possibility to edit information, edit the full metadata, edit the style for this layer, edit the data of this layer, so you can draw, you can modify the ge ge geometries and the attributes of this vector. You can upload the style, an existing style, or upload an existing uh, metadata file. I will probably go through, if, if we have time, I will show you more. Uh, oh, one thing, maybe the edit style. Uh, yeah, it will be, I will talk about the, edit, the style when I will talk about maps. You can share. And the share is where you manage permissions on this resource or any kind of resource. These are, this this tool is the same for any type of resource, okay? You can share this page. You can embed this page. When I say embed, it means I can, as I was saying at the beginning, you can take this and show the page in an external website. So if I take this URL and I show you here, you see this map without any tool. Okay, so you can share it, uh, you can embed it into a, an external website without anything related to Geonode. And here you can manage permissions. So at the moment, and by default, uh, a new resource is public. It means that anyone can download view and download the resource. Uh, the permissions are in increasing uh, capabilities. So uh, the, the, the lower one includes the upper one. So download includes view. Uh, this default can be changed. So you can be changed by from, through configuration. For example, there are, user, there are situations where mm, 
we want uh, that an upload a resource that has been uploaded should be private by default. So after the upload, uh, the owner of the resource can decide to make it visible to anyone, but otherwise it will be private and so only visible to him and the administrator. You can um, give permissions for registered members. So someone that have been registered has an active account is a registered member. So you can say, okay, any member with an account can either view, download, edit, or manage. Of course, even if it's set to known, this wins. So anybody can download, including registered members. But if I do this, it means that only registered members can download, but uh, casual users will not see and will not be able to download. Or maybe everybody can see it, but only members can download. So you see that the combinations are, we have several combinations. You can even give permissions to specific users and groups. At the moment, I don't have users and groups, but once you have when, when you have many members, you will see the list of users and the list of groups of users, because this is another feature of GeoNode. You can create groups of users, either public or private groups, meaning that there are groups that are visible to anyone and anyone can ask to be member of a group or private group, which are not visible. Uh, there are internal groups where the group manager or the administrator select which users can be members of the group. So uh, with this matrix of uh, permissions and uh, of private and public groups, you have, you cover 99 of cases, I would say. So you might decide, for example, that a specific group of users or a specific users has uh, let's say uh, an edit permission, for example, okay? So edit permissions or manage. Edit means that they can change the style, they can change the data itself, so modify the data, the contents, or modify the metadata of the content, or manage means that they can do anything. They can even change the permissions, they can delete them up, okay? they have complete management of their resource. We have a print. Um, where you can create landscape or uh, print layouts of your of your map uh, and several sizes. Uh, this is, I mean, the it has a standard template. It can be changed. It takes a while to change it. It's not straightforward, but it can do. We it can be done, and we can even give it a specific template. I, it means the way it will appear when I uh, print it. Uh, I cannot print it right now because my local computer doesn't have this uh, uh, functionality activated at the moment, but it's doable. Filtering, uh, well, it means that I can filter what I have I see on the screen. And there are many ways to filter. So for example, I have a data set of, uh, maybe I, I should use another, another resource for that. Let's do it. Uh, there was one, US states, yeah. Upload. Okay, US states. And for example, I have this resource uploaded, but I, I meant to only show uh, the West, uh, the West Coast. Okay, so I can. Uh, decide to filter these data sets with an area of interest, I can use attributes. So for example, I can select between the attributes available from this vector data set. 
state name, whatever. I can add multiple uh, filter. Okay, I can add another filter and decide any or all or none. Or I can make a spatial filter. So for example, I want to draw a polygon and only show the features that intersect with this polygon or so or are contained in the polygon or the polygon contains. So let's say intercepts for simplicity. I will draw a polygon. Okay. And I click apply. And now you see this is a filter resource. And if I save it and I reload the resource, you will see that, oh, no, right. This is only, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this is a, a glitch in my computer, but um, I know why. But basically, you are saving filter version of your data set, okay? Now, it's not working here, but you're just going to save a, a, a data set with the filter applied. So uh, users will only see this area. And there's another interesting feature uh, about users. Uh, I will create a new users to show you this feature. The user can be created from the back office instead of registering. It can be easily created in the back office, which is an administrative office with more advanced features. Um, so let's add the new user, uh, Giovanni. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay, so I will give him a name. And I'm an active user, not this, an admin. Okay, so I have created this user now. If I go to the share, I have now the new user available. And for this user, I can even select uh, Well, standard permissions, but also a just partial permission. So I can draw on the map the area that this user is allowed to, to see. So now this user should only be able to see I will, to see this area. Uh, I will try to log out and log in. Let's see if it works. It's a, it's a development version, so sometimes things do not work as expected. But yes, you see, I have logged in as, as a user. Uh, this is something that works, uh, it doesn't work in this master version, but also the thumbnail will is updated. But um, you see, I cannot uh, view the other information. So this is another way to make, uh, to give more granular spatial permissions. So it's called geofencing, okay? So I, I, you notice that I'm not able to edit this resource because I'm not the owner or an, I don't have permissions to do that. So let's get out and log in again as an administrator. Uh, sorry, wrong password. Okay. So what else? Um, I can download the data set and when I make for the download, it's similar to the download that we have here, but this download everything. But we also have a more advanced download here. We can select the format that we want as an output. And for example, we can select, well, geo package. 
and uh, the reference system. And if we want to only download uh, the area that we are seeing on the map, so for example, here, I want to only want to download only this area. I can say crop data set to the current viewport. So it will be cut to the current viewport. Or if I have set a filter as I was doing before, and I say download filter data set, it will only download the portion that was filtered. Okay. For documents, uh, things are more, almost the same. Of course, there are fewer fewer functionalities. I mean, um, you don't have the ability to edit the the image itself. You can edit the metadata. So, and this is uh, the same as in the data sets. So I will show it here. The metadata, edit metadata is the place where you can modify all the information related to any type of resource. So you get into this wizard uh it's a wizard meaning that you have tabs uh depending on well, field attributes are grouped by type and some of them are marked as mandatory for iso standard you don't have to fill them to have a resource in geonode but if you want to have a standard metadata you have to fill what is marked as mandatory so here we are missing the category. Here we are missing restrictions, attribution. So this is marked as, so if I change it and I give you something, uh, me, and I say category society, okay. I don't know what I'm missing now, but uh, okay, no problem. And then we have optional metadata. metadata. So, what we have here, let's see briefly. We have a thumbnail, we have a title, uh, link to, I will tell you later, maybe. Abstract, the data type, this is a standard ISO format. So if the data, the date that we show in the, for this resource is either the creation, publication, or revision date. A category, we have a list of predefined ISO categories, but you can even configure your own categories. If this resource is assigned to a group uh, so that all the group members can manage this resource, we can attach keywords. So, uh, I don't know, uh, image. And so I can create keywords. And then licensing uh, language and any other statement that I want to enter optional metadata with purpose, supplemental information. So you also have uh, free text areas like supplemental information. Where you can write almost anything here, okay? You can assign a DOI, so um, a, a re registered identifier to, the resource, to this resource. Um, the extent, temporal extent, the spatial representation type, not in this case, the point of contact, uh, so the owner and the metadata author. Uh, these are going to be extended in a future version where there will be multiple uh, point of contacts, multiple metadata authors and so on. So uh, when you update it, you will see that, for example, we have added the image, uh, the image keyword and here you have the image keyword and they will assign the category and when you click on these uh, they will link to uh, the catalog filtered by these values so for example society you will see that we have we have the filter society applied or if we click the keywords you will have the keyword applied to the filters okay here it is keyword um, you can also have a simplified version with more uh, fields in the advanced metadata where all the fields that we were seeing before are shown in a list and yeah 
Okay. Uh, I will stop in a moment. Maybe there are a lot of questions. Uh, Ryan, did you go through them or? Yeah, it looks like we have uh, 11 open questions. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to go through some of them now and the rest during the Q&A session or however you want to handle them. Yeah, maybe I can stop in a moment and go through some of them and maybe continue later. Okay. So okay. if I'm installing Juno for one in a Alex system container running, you burn to guess. Um, yeah, yes. I would say that this is a good spec for a medium-sized geonode. Well, I mean, very, it's a good it's a good spec. Uh, geonode can even run with fewer resources, but the more you give it, of course, the better the best it, better it is because I mean, we have a database, we have a geo server, we have so many services running on the same machine if you run the docker compose so all the stack in the same machine so yes that's would work well uh genetic includes maps there is primary map viewer yeah there are some limitations but uh we have uh plans to uh, uh align the map store as a standalone map store to the map store that we have in Geo in Geonode. At the moment, we are behind, um, and we haven't we have switched off some functionality from Map Store. Something will stay will remain different because in Map Store, Map Store is meant to Map Store as a standalone uh, application uh, is meant to provide also the tools to uh, uh, create uh, uh, create layers, uh, uh, upload layers into the map, or upload images into a GeoStory, upload the resources into the uh, things that you build the map store. Uh, the map store that we use in Geonode instead uses resources that you have in Geonode. Okay, so the big difference is this: uh, the map store framework that we, the map store client that we use in Geonode makes uh, reference to resources that we have in the catalog. So we have two steps for using the map store in Geonode. You have to provide the resources to Geonode, and then you can use the map store functionality to build your stories, dashboards, and so on. But there are other functionalities that are at the moment not available, like 3D, and as I was mentioning, we are working on that. And another one is, for example, um, extensions mechanism. It's an advanced feature in Mapster where you can build uh, applications with different plugins. So an administrator in Mapster can create uh, customized versions of the clients where you configure or upload your plugins and, and build the application. Uh, also on this side, we are working on that. Mm, probably it would be a, time, a bit different the way it will work, but uh, the idea is to be able at a certain point to create custom viewers uh, with custom plugins uh, with Mapster. Uh, there are other differences here and there. Of course, you will not have the management of users or the management of permissions as we have in the map store standalone because they are provided by Geonode. But in terms of client GIS functionalities or widgets or plugins, um, we are going to align them very soon. What kind of GIS services? Well, image and map services at the moment. We are extending this. We have a development that will start soon to extend a lot the integration with the RGIS. So probably in next year, uh, you will see a lot more features uh, for the integration with RGIS, even for feature services, I, I, I think. At the moment, uh, they are quite basic 
and it's a quite basic integration. You just select an image server and it will uh, give you image and rest server service and it will show you just uh, WMS or yeah, sort of a WMS service behind served by IJ server. More will come in the next months. Uh, you're planning to follow semantic version? And, well, 100%, uh, if you mean that, mm, yeah, I mean, uh, in the patch release, we try to avoid any feature change or feature addition to, 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 to add features. So 99% it's only security fixes or bug fixes. Uh, I would say 100 at this time because we didn't do anything, any change in 412. Uh, but it happened in the past. Nothing that really uh, changed the way general works. Okay, maybe just a change to a model because uh, it helped to fix something that, I mean, a regression or whatever. But uh, from the point of view of the API, for example, we grant. Uh, back compatibility, compatibility. So, as a user or as a third-party application that uses GeoNode, uh, you are grant that you will not have anything broken between <laughs> batch releases. But even with uh, minor releases, we might deprecate something, but never drop something. Okay. Uh, is it possible to upload the document? Yes. As I was saying, in upload documents, you have CSV files. Uh, well, it's TXT, but actually, I don't know why it's not listed here, but yeah, I will double check why it's not listed, but I will say yes. We have plans to introduce uh, non-spatial datasets in the future. Um, which means that for CSV files and XLS files, uh, we should have viewers and maybe also the ability to edit the files in a tabular format. So not with a map, but with a table, and you can edit the contents of these files and preview the contents of these files and also use them inside charts and so on. At the moment, they are just managed as files. Uh, OGC APIs and GeoServer and GeoNode. Well, GeoNode is not uh, following. Uh, I mean, the OGC APIs, you know, they are not completely, I mean, they are still a, a work in progress for many of each, many of its parts. GeoServer is following uh, the implementation because GeoServer is, is uh, one of the um, reference implementations of the GSC of the OGC API. So uh, if GeoServer implements something, you will find it in the GeoServer that ships with GeoNode because GeoNode, for example, now is shipping to 23.0. Uh, and so we are on pair with the latest versions of GeoServer. So once you have a new version of GeoServer that exposes these APIs, they will be available. They uh, there are no plans to, I mean, to give them relevance inside the UI. I mean, also because we are not giving relevance to any GeoServer OGC service. I mean, you have it. You have a link to the OGC service, which is GeoServer. Then if a client can do something more with that GeoServer, I mean, you can do it. Because when you, when you connect with GeoServer, that your server that is behind GeoNode, you connect with GeoServer, not through GeoNode. So whatever GeoServer supports is available to the clients. Okay. Uh, well, single part, really? Oh. Uh, Maybe you could uh, open an issue for that. It's not, I mean, it's something that sounds new to me. I think we can, uh, for sure. I mean, there's nothing preventing simple part polygons. If it doesn't work, it's a regression. Uh, so please, uh, anonymous attendee, 
uh, I invite you to open an issue. Uh, orthophotos, well, yes. I mean, uh, but they won't be managed differently from other rasters images, okay? So um, the orthophotos, if you mean if you if you mean mosaics, no, uh, mosaics cannot. I mean, they are not going to be managed automatically uh, when you upload them to Geonode. So there are ways to publish mosaics, image mosaics, uh, into Geonode, but you have to do uh, the reverse, which is we, we we do often. You have to publish the image mosaic into GeoServer, and GeoServer can, of course, manage image mosaics. And when you have the resource available in GeoServer, you can pull, let's say, the resource into Geonode. So instead of asking Geonode to send and, uh, and configure the resource in GeoServer, you do the reverse. You first publish the resource in GeoServer, however you want to, and then there's a command uh, to tell, okay, server, can you give me the resources that you are aware of? Uh, and that will be published on Geonode, okay? So no, not direct upload of image mosaics in Geonode at the moment. Uh, well, installation of Geonode, it depends on how you want to install it. The, be, the simplest way is with Docker. And I would say that in this moment, it's very simple. Uh, with Docker in a basic uh, installation with default values, it's a two, co two commands, really. Uh, you create the environment file with a utility and you Docker build, Docker run, and you have it. If you want to, uh, to, to, to install it uh, with a single service installed by hand, by hand, yes, it's still quite complicated because you have to install your server, you install Postgres, Nginx, all the parts. And well, documentation has been updated, improved uh, recently. So I would say depends on what you want to achieve. But if you, if you had troubles, you can ask. Yeah, Giovanni, real, Giovanni, real quick, I just wanted to uh, emphasize to Ben and others, if some of the uh, questions are more complicated, contact us. We can have a call yeah, yeah, sure. and, and get into uh, further details on it. Yeah, uh, also for basic and advanced installation, well, the documentation is a bit, uh, in, I mean, should be improved also in this side. In basic, it means a standard installation and the advanced installation is how to tune something or maybe um, fine tune or some configurations but the basic is more i would say more a standard because often we install genode with the basic approach uh well this is something complicated a bit complicated i mean depends on if you have a genode a project so also, you should ask on the list. I can. It's not easy. Easy answer. Spatial temporal data. Uh, we have something for vector data, and I will show you an example here. If I add a data set that has a vector attribute, uh, an attribute with date, with a date format, and what I, when I'm saying date format, it means that the format. The, the, the file format supports the date field type. For example, a shape file can have a date field type. A geo, a, a geo package has a date field type. It cannot be a string containing a date. It must be a date type. So if I have, for example, I have an example here, earthquakes. This is a shape file that contains an attribute with date type. If I do that and uh, upload, at the beginning, it will appear as a standard data set, okay? With all, everything displayed at once. But I know that this data set has this, uh, where is it? 
date field. So, and I know that this was a date type field. So if I go to, at the moment it's a bit convoluted, but it will be simplified in the future. The settings, there are some hidden settings that stay inside the metadata editor, inside the settings tab. That will be more, I mean, visible in the future version, in a future version. For example, the featured is here. And you see, there's a has time. Ah, there's also the is mosaic. This is a legacy feature that is not available anymore. And we are going to drop this for the moment. So forget it and forget it. Okay. So the only thing that is working at the moment is as time. And we are going to remove the others for the moment. So has time, if I flag it, this will give me the list of attributes that are recognized as date time attributes. And I know that date was a date time attribute. So that, and indeed I find it here. So if I enable these and the date attribute, I leave everything, the rest as it is. And I update this. You see a timeline appeared here because now Geonode is aware that this is a, a, a time series. I have my histogram and I can navigate through the histogram and move forward and see my points. These are earthquakes. So at the moment, this is available I mean, this automation is only available for vector data. So for raster time series, it must be configured in a different way, but it can be configured. Uh, we do it. Uh, you don't have a, a straightforward way as for vectors, but if, let's say, if GeoServer is publishing this resource as a time aware resource, Geo, GeoNode uh, will be aware of it and will show also the timeline. I will go quickly to uh, to other topics, which are maps, geostores, and dashboards. I cannot dig into all this uh, functionality, but um, I will show you just uh, a, a couple of examples. So what is a map? Well, a map is a combination of data sets, okay? The data set has a viewer, but it's only meant as a preview and for, for uh, administrators and owners to manage the default styling of this uh, data set or to change the data. But, it, but the best way to share a data set is, is through maps. Uh, because maps give you more more functionalities. Uh, let's say I want to create a map for the for the United States. Okay, so I add the data set, and I select states. Now, one thing that I can do in the map is, for example, I can change the style of this data set within this map. So let's say. I have the state, these are map store functionalities, okay? I want to change the style for this and make it, um, let's say, a classification style based on the, uh, no, sorry. Uh, simple style, but, uh, yeah, let's do it. Uh, by employed, let's see. Okay. Equal interval, natural breaks. Okay. So this is a thematic map uh, of number of employed US. I apply it and I save the map as USA employed. Okay, 
Now, if I go to the home page, I have this map. Uh, you will see that uh, I can update also the, uh, the preview, apply. Okay, so now I have this preview updated and it's different. I mean, the original data set is still gray. I don't care. I mean, I want to share it in a map and in this map, I want to share it with this visualization, which is by employed. And I can even add widgets to a map. So for example, I want to add a table with a um, state name and land kilometers, persons, families. Uh, yeah, and a few others. Okay, service. Okay. Some data. Here we are. We have our data with the selected features. And if I save it and I share it with someone, like and I want to embed it, I can go here and I have my, oh yeah, in the, in the embedding, uh, I cannot see charts at this moment, but I can save it again. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, uh, anyone can view this map with widgets and so on. So the map has additional features compared to a data set. First of all, the ability to style the data sets by map, per map, and add uh, widgets, which include uh, where they are, charts, text, HTML, rich text. So I can add the description, add images, and so on. A table and counters, so numbers that can be obtained by operations. So for example, number of, uh, well, where is people, persons, some, okay. And I can filter. So for example, I want to, uh, sorry, it's linked. It's link. I can keep it linked. What does it mean? It means that uh, it's linked to the current visualization. So if I move, you will see these values update also here. These charts are linked to the current visualization. So as I move around, I will see only values and data from the area that I'm viewing in this time. Of course, this can be changed uh, if I edit and I remove this link. Now it will, st it will stay the same, whatever uh, I remove this link. Yeah, you see, it's not linked anymore. So these and other features are available here. I can use annotations, so I can add annotations to the map that are stored inside the map. So they're not features, uh, resources in the catalog of GNOLD. They are just annotations. So point, markers, areas, lines, text that I can put on the map for this data set. So, uh, the same is true for, uh, I would go to dashboards. If I create a dashboard, add resource, and I create the dashboard. Oh, sorry. I have to, okay. In a dashboard, I can, can add widgets as I was doing for maps or a map. So now I have a map, so I'm gonna add this map to the dashboard, yeah. USA, and I put it here, okay. And I can add the table 
as I was doing before, and I can select even a table from other data sets because I can have multiple maps in a dashboard. So I have to say, okay, I want a table from states, so the same data set. And uh, okay, some fields, uh, let's, okay, state name and employed. Employed. And same counter or maybe chart here from states. And I want a bar chart, uh, the X attribute to state name, employed, some color. Okay, I will keep it by the de default. Employed by state. And And here we are, okay. Save USA dashboard. Nice, I have a chart, okay. Let's see if this can be, view it as embedded. Yeah, okay. Now, these, these are not linked, uh, but I can link them. So let's do it. I can link these chart edit link this chart to map okay save it and now if i move around the map this will be updated okay and of course i can add any an, uh, any number of maps charts and other widgets. And also a legend, a legend for for the map. So for example, this legend is employed, employed some. Okay, for just stories thing, thing that this it's a bit different. The just story is something new, uh, something different from what we were saying before. Oh, I don't have an automatic preview of the dashboard, so I have to. What I can do is make a screenshot, save it to my computer. And then inside the info button where I can set the thumbnail, I can upload an image. Uh, here it is, I click apply. And now my homepage will have the screenshot, my dashboard. For a resource, uh, again, okay. For, uh, sorry, just story, just story. Uh, has is a more advanced um, thing USA employed. I have a lot of uh, functionalities to uh, include uh, a, a tree of um, paragraphs, text areas, uh, media content, maps, and carousels of images. So here I have the editor. We are viewing the editor. So for example, the basic layout is a title in the middle. And then you have, uh, can edit and select if in this area, I want to show a map, an image or a video. Let's say I want to, sh to, to, to visualize the map that I created before. Okay, apply, here it is, okay, and now I want to add uh, below, I want to add my dashboard. I can do it, uh, well, by embedding the URL of my dashboard. I take this, I click embed, 
save. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, I'm an HTTPS, so I cannot, I cannot use it. It's failing because it's uh, it's not safe. Mm, okay, I will show you something different. I will just show you an image. Okay, so here I want to add. I can add a banner, a paragraph. A paragraph is a complex content where I can uh, can contain other uh, other items. Uh, a carousel, an immersive section is a map. Um, well, it's it's well. I, I don't want to add that right now. Too complex, too complicated. Let's say I want to add an image, and here it is. Apply. Uh, I want to yeah, large. Okay, and I want to add the description here. So let's add a paragraph. Where is it? And in the text, the following is a nice image. Okay, and you see the structure is available here and I can move around the paragraphs so I can move. Oh, this is not available anymore, so I will remove it. Yeah, so I can move it around so I can put the paragraph behind the image or above. And now I can preview it. So this is what users will see. And if I, um, there are many ways, of course, to, to change how the, the, the default for text, uh, for font families, these are the, the story theme, but you can also change them, change everything uh, one by one because the editor allows you to change uh, styling or font formats and so on. So hey, when Giovanni, I'm done, yeah. Real quick, uh, just for the sake of time, we're coming up towards uh, the, the end. Uh, Half okay. hour. There, there yeah. were a couple of questions regarding setup guides for upgrading from 3.3 to 4. Um, okay. Can you, can you provide a reference or I guess a resource for um, installation instructions from 3.3 to 4? Unfortunately, uh, I cannot give you <laughs> instructions. I mean, there's um, there isn't a documentation for the upgrade in this moment. Uh, we are we have um, plans to, to do it, but uh, it's not available. Um, in general, I would say that if you have a Geonode, vanilla Geonode, so not the Geonode project, um, if you don't have something custom, uh, doing an upgrade using the same data directory, just have a data directory and the same DB should be straightforward because the migration that are executed or that you have to execute. So the migration, the DB, the commands to execute the migration, uh, the Python managed by migrate uh, that is executed automatically by the Django, uh, well, by the Docker container when you start it up or you have to execute them manually should be enough because uh, the biggest change between three and four are changes to the models. Of course, the code is changed a lot, but in terms of existing data, what is really changed is the data model, some data models. So uh, we, tr we have tried hard to automate the upgrade of the data models through the migrations commands, so the migrations inside Geonode. So if you need to understand what migration is, uh, well, in the documentation, you will see that when you do an install, uh, sorry, not here, in the documentation, uh, probably there's no specific uh, RAM migrations. Uh, this is for 3.2 to 3.3x, and it's similar for 3.3 to 4. You have to 
run this command managed by migrate. This will try the upgrade of the DB automatically. Uh, in terms of uh, variables, uh, it depends if you want to upgrade the services to your server and Postgres behind the scene, or if you want to stick with the services. So uh, speaking of Geonode itself, so the Geonode application and migrate should be enough because it migrates the database. If you want to upgrade your server, the GeoServer data directory remains the same. There are no changes. I mean, the GeoServer is able to read the data directories, older data directories. Uh, the, the other part uh, that, I mean, this is where we want, would like to have a, some guidance uh, is to uh, review and in case uh, add uh, missing environmental variables that might be needed by the application or by some services, in particular if you run with Docker. At the moment, uh, there's no, there isn't a guide and for this. Uh, you can, of course, do a diff, let's say from an env sample, because Geonode in the repository, both the project and the Geonode Vanilla provide this env sample. The env sample is the template from which uh, a valid env file for Docker for Docker is generated. So you can see if you have all these variables set. In that case, you're okay. Or if you miss something, you have to add them. Some in particular, yeah, uh, most of them are variables that existed before. So, but some of them has changed maybe the name or or some have been added okay so uh th the idea is to align the environmental variables the settings and run a migrate command if you have issues you can ask uh cool are there are there any known issues with the uh, print function not working i'm not sure if we've addressed that one yet and the upgrade you mean uh, yeah, uh, yeah, there are, <laughs> uh, because uh, there are issues uh, we have found sometimes uh, if you have custom setups, okay? For example, if you have custom themes or, or custom code, uh, there's no automatic way of upgrading it. Uh, you have to adapt your customizations to the new version because this, the structure of both the code, the Python code and the HTML code has changed a lot. And also we are not using the legacy uh, pages anymore, the legacy template system. So the UI is completely changed now. So only the metadata remain mostly the same, the metadata editor, but all the rest from the homepage to the viewers and um, the settings and whatever, they are implemented with a new client now. So you have, if you have made changes to your homepage or to the listing, to the catalog view or to the filters or whatever, uh, you have to adapt this change to the new version. And there's no automatic route for that. Then there, there might be uh, challenges sometimes because the migrate command tries hard to automatic to make an automatic migration, but it might fail. So sometimes we have to do some fixes uh, to the DB manual fixes, but it happens rarely if you have a standard setup. If you have made changes or manual changes or something. Uh, uh, in that case, you you will need mostly at the DB level, uh, not the source code. I mean, you will have to make some tweaks to the DB. But the services, in particular, GeoServer and, well, RabbitMQ remains the same. Uh, so I would say it's not that impossible. There are softwares where a, a major upgrade is much harder 
<laughs> to uh, compared to what is needed to upgrade your node. Um, is it possible to custom? Oh, I don't. Well, I will go through quickly through the questions. Uh, feature service is not current support. No. Um, it's supported. I mean, their support. Uh, well, no, no, I would say no. But as I was saying, uh, we have planned work for that. I mean, it's not something that we would like to have. We are next month, we will work on that both on the map store side at the and the general side because, first of all, we need uh, support in the client, and we are going to start soon. The, the, development through an error without the gym column. So I guess you refer to CSV. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I think. So if it's the case, please open an issue. Uh, maybe it's a regression. So I invite you to open issues. Uh, no, yeah, not yet. Um, oh, the WMS cat capability link, you mean the internal one? Yes, of course. Uh, the, the w, the, all the GeoServer services, including WM, uh, WMS, respect the permissions that you set in GeoNode. So if you set, for example, a, a, a resource, a data set that is not visible to users or to anonymous user, registered member users, they will not see inside the get capabilities. You, to see the the, the data set, you, you need to make the request either using the access token in the request, there's documentation for that, or by passing the beater token inside the header of the request. So all the GeoServer services are secured uh, with the same rules that you set in general. Bubble and heat map, not at the moment. Nice to have. We are discussing this uh, also with the client, but not planned for the moment. Uh, customized front-end though, back-end, uh, mainly JavaScript and Python. Well, I would say JavaScript and Python. JavaScript for the front-end, in particular React, we are working, uh, well, depending on what you want to customize. If you want to customize the client features, you need also just React, okay? Uh, but if you just want to change, for example, the home page or the style or add parts to the HTML shell, I mean, the shell that uh, contains also the client, uh, or to pages that do not make use of the client, the Map Store client, well, these are this is just plain HTML and JavaScript. So it's just a matter of working on the HTML and JavaScript side. For the backend, it's totally Python and Django. Uh, for all that and fixed upgrade is easy. Yes. For all Y, X, and Z upgrade is easy. Well. No, I would say that for a given X, an upgrade with from Y and Z it will be easy. When X changes, things might even break. The case from three to four. We haven't broken anything, but I mean, you have to make changes to adapt your project. Possible to customize the map viewer? Uh, yes. Yes. There are several ways to do that. From the most simple with local settings, customizing the settings, to the most complex, which include uh, bundling uh, uh, plugins, custom plugins, and so on. Uh, there are some documentation, uh, not the, I mean, we want to extend this documentation. By the way, uh, our developers are very, I mean, uh, can help a lot 
if you ask questions uh but if you go to to the to the page general maps or client uh you will see some documentation here for development update client to application bundles custom branches custom resource pages okay so you have something here uh, you can reach this link from the Juno Mapster client GitHub repo. You can see it here. This is the link. How close is the Juno team to integrating layers with elevation data? What do you mean elevation data? If you mean uh Okay, like in GeoServer with with an elevation uh, attribute, uh, like in time series for elevation. Uh, well, the Ge GeoServer already supports this. So the same as for image mosaics, if you have it published in GeoServer, um, well, I mean, it depends on how you want to visualize this elevation data, by the way. Uh, we don't have a tool to like a, a time slider for elevation. So elevation slider where you can uh, cut or slice the data by elevation. No, we don't have a tool in GeoNode for this visualization. You can publish elevation data in GeoServer, but and if you have a client that can make use of this elevation uh, attribute from GeoServer, uh, well, Josever will be able to serve the request and the queries, so slicing by elevation, so the dimension, the elevation dimension. But yeah, Geno doesn't provide a tool to slice or uh, cut the data by elevation, and there are no plans for that at the moment. Share links be provided? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, links are provided as HTTPS if you serve Genode over HTTPS. At the moment, I'm in a local host, so I'm not serving through over HTTPS, no certificates. But of course, if I go to the online demo, for example, development demo, this is over HTTPS. And if I take this and I share it, uh, I take the share, you will see it's HTTPS. Um, so how you share depends on how you're hosting Geonode. I hope I've answered all the questions, even if briefly. Um, you can use the GitHub issues, uh, if you have problems, you can subscribe to the GeoNode uh, users and developers mailing list. You find information inside the GeoNode org uh, website. And also there is a chat, which is Gita. I'm not using it much, but you will find many users uh, there, also developers, this Gita, or the mailing lists, okay? and the issue tracker, if you find bugs or something that doesn't work for you, uh, please. It's really important for us to have this kind of contributions to, because there are so many use cases and age cases that someone, sometimes our tests do not cover. Uh, I hope I covered more or less all the main functionality as a lot of things have been left, but I think you know, Was... Yeah, thanks, thanks, Giovanni. Uh, very yeah. valuable. There are a lot of uh, a lot of posts about you know uh, from from attendees thanking you and uh, thanking us for the presentation. So uh, hopefully that was relevant and valuable for everybody. Um, again, if you have any questions, info at geosolutionsgroup.com, or you can post to the GeoNode community uh, or GeoServer Map Store uh, for that matter. Um,
Giovanni, any any other uh, resources in terms of reaching out for uh, additional help or you know help with more complex issues not not covered in the limited amount of time that we had today? Well, yeah, the issue tracker from GitHub is the most important for for issues. So the GitHub either either the the main one for the project. So on GeoNode GitHub, or if it's something more related to the client. And you know that it's something related to clients, you can go to the Geonode Mapster client repository. Okay, Geonode and Geonode Mapster client, you can open issues here. But I mean, in general, I would invite you to ask in the mailing list before uh, issues are more related to problems uh, with Geonode itself, not problems with your setup. Uh, but if you, I mean, don't be afraid if you if you don't know how to contact uh you can use the issue uh, of course very nice um yeah i think with that uh we, we went a little bit over uh really appreciate uh those of you who have stuck around and you know we continue to develop geonode as well as GeoServer and map store uh, we're always interested in how you're using the applications and supporting you uh if and when and where we can um so don't hesitate to reach out and contact us anytime. Um, one note for those of you in North America, FOS4G North America will be held in Baltimore at the Hilton Baltimore Inner Harbor, uh, 23 through 25 of October. Uh, we're hosting pre-conference workshops, uh, one of which is on Geonode. Uh, so we invite you to check out FOS4GNA.org uh, for more information and it's free to attend for anybody with uh, .gov, .mil, .edu, .org um, email address. Um, so uh, with that, um, unless there are any other uh, burning kind of uh, emergency questions or statements, um, we will conclude today's webinar. Uh, thanks again, Giovanni, for your expertise. And thank you for all, all for, uh, for attending. And we'll, uh, we look forward to the next webinar. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.